to bed.
sing, do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. Now, if I don't hear you, something is terribly wrong. Okay, you made it this far. Now let's actually graduate and sing the song.
dancers in here before we start singing? We got some dancers? Well, come on over here. Come on over here. Come on over to the stage, y'all. Let's go. Let's make a mess of this place. We're going to go out with a bang. All right. Not only do we have dancers, but we have singers. Eat 
Thank you, thank you, and uh, I'm always, I'm always tempted to tell them to just keep playing, but I think we should probably move on. And uh, thank you for Joe Ferry on bass. Dana Mancuso on keyboard and vocal. Jerry Mitkowski on keyboard. Dave Lewitt on drum. Vinny Nobly on trombone. Neil Spitzer on sax. And Dan Cotman on guitar. Thank you again. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the national anthem?
sung by Matthew Kosek and Christopher Jones. Matthew and Christopher are candidates for the Bachelor of Music degree in voice performance from the Conservatory of Music. Next fall, Matthew will be attending Manus College for his master's in music, while Christopher will, will be returning to Purchase to pursue his master in music and opera performance. Good afternoon, graduates of the class of 2015. <laughs> Parents, relatives, friends of the graduates, members of the faculty, staff, administration, and distinguished guests. I am Thomas Schwartz, president of Purchase College, State University of New York. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 43rd annual commencement exercises. Joining, joining me on the dais are dignitaries, friends of the college, members of our various foundation boards, our deans, directors, and chairs, our officers, and members of the college council. I will introduce at this time those members of the platform party who will not be introduced later in the ceremony. May I ask each of you, as I introduce you, to stand and to remain standing until all are introduced. I request that the audience hold your applause until all have been recognized. First, Associate Vice Chancellor for Finance and Business, State University of New York, Josh Sager. New York State Senator George Latimer. Members of the Purchase College Council, John Giacano. Letitia Blackburn, President of Purchase College Student Government. <laughs> Betsy Robertson, Member of the College Council. Trustee of the Purchase College Foundation. Trustees, Lucille Werlinick, Chair. Phyllis Horsby Hyacinth, Member. Member of the Alumni Association. Audrey Kozarin, President Emeritus, and Kevin Collymore. Dean of the School of Liberal Arts and Sciences and Vice Provost Suzanne Kessler. Dean of the School of the Arts and Interim Director, Conservatory of Music, Ravi Rajan. Interim Director of Academic Programs, School of Liberal Studies and Continuing Education and President, Professional Staff, Kathleen Cheng. Chair of Humanities, Ross Daly. 
Chair of Natural and Social Sciences, Linda Bastone. No applause, then. <laughs> Chair of Film and Media Studies, Michelle Stewart. It's going to take longer. <laughs> Chair Arts Management, James Undercoffler. <laughs> Director, School of Art and Design, Stephen Lamb. Interim co-director, Conservatory of Dance, Betty Jane Sills and Larry Clark. <clears throat> You're not following orders. <laughs> director, Conservatory of Theater, Greg Taylor. Yeah! Professor Peggy DeCook, presiding officer of the faculty and chair of the college senate. No applause there. <laughs> Keith, Keith Landa. Director of the Teaching, Learning, and Technology Center and University Faculty Senator. Patrick Callahan, Director of the Library. Har Harry McFadden, Director of the Performing Arts Center. Tracy Fitzpatrick, Director of the Newberger Museum of Art. Professor Connie Lober, UUP Chapter President's President. The Faculty Marshals. There are members from our outstanding faculty who will be retiring this year, and I want to recognize them for their long-term and long-lasting contributions and dedication to the college and to its students. Two of our retirees are serving as our faculty marshals, Professor Jeffrey Field and Professor Wayne Tabrock. <laughs> and one is our mace carrier, which is right here. I always make sure that the faculty member who is carrying the mace behind me is friendly. <laughs> New York State University Police Color Guard, Police Officer Paul Fulshire, Police Officer Matthew Leach, Police Officer Michael Miller, and Police Officer James McGowan. <laughs> College officers, Dennis Craig, Vice President for Enrollment Management and Integrated Marketing, and Associate Provost. Ernie Palmieri, Vice President for Student Affairs and Associate Provost for Integrative Learning. <laughs> Judy Nolan, Chief Financial Officer and Vice President of Operations. Janine Starr, Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Now, please join me in welcoming all of the members of the platform. <laughs> A significant number of faculty and staff join us today for this celebration. Will our esteemed faculty and talented faculty and staff who guided this class please stand. I want to recognize those responsible for being able to actually operate the college. The custodians, the mechanics, university police, the staff, the secretaries, and all of the people whose tireless efforts as support staff actually make the college work. Thank you. And for today's program, I want to thank Patricia Bice, Keisha Martin, Patrick Savalskis, Carrie Bianchi, Kimberly Cook, Rich Nassisi, Javon Noblin, Jennifer Shingello, Jared Pereira, Sandy Dialak, and Nancy Diaz. These individuals have gone above and beyond to ensure that today's ceremony is memorable and gratifying. Thank you very much. And now will the parents, families, and friends of the graduates also stand for recognition. We know that uh, without you, 
uh, we wouldn't have this day, so thank you. And now, the degree candidates, will you please rise? <laughs> and now, I ask that we all rise, because without each of us, this day would not happen. Thank you. When I graduated from college almost 50 years ago, seems like only yesterday, the war in Vietnam was heating up and the civil rights movement was raging. Students were protesting for change inspired in part by the legacy of the late President John Kennedy, who had challenged Americans in his inaugural speech to let the word go forth from this time and place that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. What did protests look like at that time? It was the burning of draft cards and campus rallies across the nation in opposition to the Vietnam War. It was joining the Civil Rights Movement and riding the Freedom Buses to Mississippi to help with voter registration in African American communities. It was questioning authority, particularly campus administrations and the government. And the country changed, the country changed because of that protest and the war ended. Today, we are once again engaged in war, the war on terrorism. And we are also engaged in what I believe is a si new civil rights moment, movement. Call it Civil Rights Two, or maybe it's three or four. We have made some progress in some areas since the 1960s. The rights movement of women and those and those who identify as LGBTQ have resulted in some important legislation that has made discrimination based on sex, sex or sexual preferences illegal in most states. While we have advanced, clearly we are far from achieving the goal of equality. The events of this past year from Ferguson to Baltimore remind us that we have yet to conquer the underlying racism in this country. Despite the civil rights movement, we must consider the obstacles, police misconduct and worse, polarizing politics as opportunities for our involvement. Here are some opportunities for your involvement to deal with racism in open discussions within and across communities, to work on the lingering effects of poverty resulting from the redlining of neighborhoods, urban decay, and economic blight, to reverse the destruction of family and community caused by the higher incidence of incarceration of black males for minor crimes. to reinstate and expand programs that will ensure a quality of opportunity for everyone, from preschool and K through 12 to neighborhood centers and to prisons. And finally, to stop the drain on higher education, because in any form, college, community college, vocational training, the key to improvement and advancement is an educated society. If we are to reverse the widening disparity between groups of Americans, 
whether because of their beliefs, their race, religions, or incomes, it is through access to quality education at all levels. This past year on campus, we have had dialogue concerning the meaning of our tag, Think Wide Open. We have had significant opportunities to expand and improve upon what we think Think Wide Open really means. Those of you who have spoken out on this campus seized that opportunity. You made us a stronger and a more open campus, more true to our Think Wide Open philosophy. You can do the same in the outside world. So I, on your commencement day, I challenge you. Now it is your turn to take the torch. You must seize the torch and seize an opportunity for improvement. Create a vision of what you want for yourself. Set your intent. Couple your vision with passion so you achieve your goal. Focus on that which will help you attain your vision. Choose one of these opportunities or some other significant national opportunity for improvement and make it your own work while you pursue your vision for your career, your family, and your future. Vote, join an organization or a political party, speak out for what you believe. The other day I listened to one of our seniors, Brittany Henry, who spoke about, who spoke about transforming obstacles into opportunity. Here is her message in part. We cannot become negative products of our circumstances. It's a choice that we have to make. Refuse to become a negative product of our environment and choose to move forward positively. Be your biggest fan. We need these failures so that we can work harder for ourselves. There is nothing like having that motivation for something that is hard to get because soon something instinctual kicks in and creates this unstoppable drive. I think that's good advice for all of us. Let me end with another Kennedy quote, this one from Senator Ted Kennedy, who said at the funeral of his brother Robert in 1968, the future does not belong to those who are content with today apathetic toward common problems and their fellow man alike, timid and fearful in the face of new ideas and bold projects. Rather, it will belong to those who can blend vision, reason, and courage in a personal commitment to the ideals and great enterprises of American society. Our answer is to rely on youth, not a time of life but a state of mind a temper of the will, a quality of the imagination, a predominance of courage over timidity, of the appetite for adventure over the love of ease. The cruelties and obstacles of this swiftly changing planet will not yield to obsolete dogmas and outworn slogans. They cannot be moved by those who cling to a present that is already dying who prefer the illusion of security to the excitement and danger that come with even the most peaceful progress. I challenge you to take the torch as the new generation seize on the significant opportunities we have to improve this nation as you have done for our college. You and the nation will be better for it. Thank you and God bless you.
I'm now very pleased to introduce an honored guest and a regular attendee at our commencement here today to congratulate the graduating class of 2015, our senior United States Senator from New York, Chuck Schumer. <laughs> Senator Schumer is an example of someone who seized that torch and took the opportunity. And he will tell you when his political life started, he was not much older than you are now. And it started in New York in the Assembly. For over 30 years, Senator Schumer has been a dedicated public servant, tireless fighter from New York, for New York, and leader on national issues. He is currently the third ranking Democrat in the Senate. Senator Schumer serves as a ranking member of the Senate Rules and Administration Committee and as a member of the Senate Judiciary, Finance, Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committees. Over the past year, Senator Schumer has stewarded legislation aimed at improving transportation and highway safety, which the events of the last few days demonstrates that he's on the right course. He continues to be a strong voice in the fight to ensure that college remains affordable. From international trade to health care reform, Senator Schumer continues to advocate for legislation that will improve the state's economy and the quality of life of its citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Senator Chuck Schumer. Thanks for the great job you did. Well, thank you, Tom Schwartz. And let me first thank you and the faculty and the staff, all the way down to the people who clean the floors late at night, for making SUNY Purchase one of the best institutions of higher learning, not just in our state, but in our country. Job well done. I want to congratulate our honorary degree recipients, Indra Nui, who I know does a great job uh, here in Westchester, Deborah Spar. Uh, David Wang, and my friend George Vladimir as well, our state senator. Now, it's my honor to address all of you, members of the platform, friends and family of the graduates, but most of all, you, the class of 2015 SUNY Purchase. Congratulations. Now, first I'd like to announce my class gift. You know it's hard to pay for college, if you're poor, the federal government helps you out. That's a good thing. But what about the middle class? So I wrote a law, it's on the books now, that says you or your parents, whoever paid for college, can take as a full tax credit $2,500 off your federal taxes for each year of college, provided, there's always a provided in Washington, provided your family income is below $200,000 a year. So, for those of you who come from families who make below $200,000 a year, make sure you or mom or dad take that deduction. It's relatively new, a credit, it's a credit. Um, it's relatively new and about a third of all families who were entitled last year forgot to do it. If you're one of those who forgot, this year, last year, the year before, you can file a form with the IRS and get three years of it back. That's $7,500, not a bad class gift. Now, what happens if you come from a family who makes above $200,000 a year? God bless you. So, to this great class of 2015, you know, you're graduating with many advantages. One, as I mentioned, is your education. Only about a third of all people your age will get a college degree, and most of those will not get as good a degree as you're receiving today from SUNY Purchase. So that gives you a leg up. You have a second leg up. You are the first generation to grow up amidst all of this new technology. You know, in 1988, a few years before most of you were born, was the first time the word internet was ever used. In 1994, there was no Google and no Facebook and no Twitter and no texting and no LOL. 
In 1995, there were 14 websites on the World Wide Web. 14, that's it. Today, there are 13 billion. That shows you how quickly technology is changing our world. And you know, your teachers, your parents, me, the older generation, we try to get used to this technology, but it's hard for us. We're learning it as adults. But you, you were born into it. Technology is to your generation is water is to a fish. You've been swimming in it your whole lives. And so the fact that you've gotten a great education here at SUNY Purchase, and the fact that you're the first generation to grow up totally immersed in this new technology means one thing. Now is the time, if there ever was one, as Tom mentioned, to figure out what your dream is and reach high for it. Then reach deep down inside yourself. See what you're made of. See if you can achieve that dream. My advice to the class of 2015 is very simple. Go for it. Now, now, sometimes you'll make the wrong choice, but if my experience is any indication, you'll pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and move forward. But if you make the right choice, with a lot of hard work and a little luck and some prayer, your life will be enriched forever. Now, I learned these things myself. When I was seated at college graduation several decades back, as you are today, I learned I had just won a scholarship to travel all around the world, all expenses paid for a whole year. For me, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I had never been out of this country. But at the same time, and for the first time, I had met a girl, and I fell in love. Aww. So I had to decide. Do I go around the world for a whole year on the all-expense-paid scholarship, or do I stay home with the girl? What would you do if you were in my shoes, class of 2015? <laughs> around the world, they say. I stayed home with the girl. Nope. Don't clap yet, you romantics. The story unfolds. That summer, she went on a brief vacation, and I went to the airport to meet her on her return. As soon as she got off the plane, I saw by the look on her face, something was the matter. She dumped me by Labor Day. <laughs> there I was, no scholarship, no trip around the world, no girl. I said to myself, what a loser you are. You're never going to make anything of yourself. And I stayed in my house for several months, moped around, felt bad for myself. But somehow I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and moved forward. And a few years later, I found myself seated at graduation once again, this time from law school. But on the way home from law school, I told mom and dad I was not going to join the fancy law firm like we had planned. I told them my love was politics. I told them my dream was to run for public office even though the odds of winning seemed remote. My parents were shocked. My mother was particularly disappointed. You see, they struggled to send me to college and law school. The law firm, my father was an exterminator. He never went to college. And the law firm was paying $400 a week, which in those days was more money than my family had ever seen. But I wanted to pursue my dream. So that fall, at the age of 23, I ran for the New York State Assembly, and I had three opponents. There was the party machine candidate, there was a neighborhood activist, and then there was my mother, who was telling all her friends not to vote for me. <laughs> so as she said, I'd get this dumb idea of being a politician out of my big, thick head. Well, graduates, a few years earlier, I sure didn't get that girl, but that November, I won the election. So. To this great class of 2015, go for it. Reach for that dream. And because you've gotten a great education here at SUNY Purchase, because you're the first generation to grow up amidst this technology, because you have family and friends who are behind you all the way, and most of all, because you're you, it's my hope, my prayer, and indeed my confidence, you'll succeed with flying colors. To this great class of 2015, congratulations. Good luck. Godspeed, and don't you forget, go for it.
Thank you, Senator. And uh, it's been it's been wonderful to watch from uh, when I remember when Senator Schumer was a congressman and then ran for the Senate in a very contested race, and to see uh, what he has accomplished in those terms uh, has been uh, really inspiring, and I hope it's inspiring for you. Uh, the events of the last year in the New York State Legislature suggest that there is opportunity there for people who can run and have the, the uh, you know, we'll seize that. So thank you again, Senator. It is the tradition of the Academy to honor the individuals I would like who, who uh, uh, are, are in specific fields. I would like to uh, ask Jeffrey Putman uh, to come to the um, dais, please. Good afternoon. Um, as Tom Schwartz said, my name is Jeffrey Putman, and I'm a member of the class of 1996, not that long ago. And I am the president of the Purchase College Alumni Association. So welcome to all of our new members. It is now time to proceed to the awarding of our, uh, recognizing, sorry, our distinguished alumni. It is the tradition of the Academy to honor individuals of preeminence, influence, and service within their chosen fields through a variety of means. For example, the honorary doctorate awarded by the Board of Trustees of the State University recognizes individuals for a significant body of life's work, unparalleled accomplishments, and or generous and sustained service to society. A President's Award for Distinguished Alumni honors distinguished alumni whose demonstrated excellence and significant contributions within their chosen fields reflects on the quality of their educational experience at Purchase. We are confident that our alumni, poised as they are for roles of major influence and contribution, will continue to emerge worthy of these awards. The audience will find brief description of today's honorees on pages 8 through 11 in the commencement program. Dr. Putman, will you please assist me with the presentation of the President's Award for Alumni Achievement and join me at this time. Are we just, just seeing if, uh, you know, we, we have a new tradition this year. We didn't put it over there. It's under here. <laughs> the recipient of the 2015 President's Award for Distinguished Alumni is Stephen Vitiello. Mr. Vitiello, will you please join us? We are honored to present you with this citation, which reads in part, Stephen Vitiello, Distinguished Alumnus, Purchase College, State University of New York. Whereas you received a BA in literature as a member of the Purchase College class of 1986, and you claimed that you had an unofficial minor in film studies, whereas for the past 29 years you have become well known internationally as a visual and sound artist with sound, photograph, and drawing installations that have been featured at the Whitney Museum, Mass Mocha, the High Line, and the Sydney Biennial, and you have been featured in group shows such as the Soundings exhibition at MoMA. Whereas your work explores the relationship between image, light, and sound, and thus has been described as transformative, changing one's experience of place. 
whereas your commissioned New York City work, A Bell for Every Minute, captures the essence of your artistry. You map the sounds of 59 bells from around New York State, each one playing for a minute while singing together for one minute, a piece of art that unites people in that it has meaning for everyone, though not the same meaning. Whereas you have received both a Guggenheim Fellowship for Fine Arts and creative capital funding in emerging fields, among other recognitions for your talent, and in turn you have shared your talent with students as a professor in the Kinetic Imaging Department at Virginia Commonwealth University. Whereas your career reflects the essence of the Purchase College education dedicated to interdisciplinary studies pairing the arts with the liberal arts. Now therefore do I, Thomas Schwartz, president on behalf of the alumni, faculty, students, and staff of Purchase College, State University of New York, proudly recognize Stephen Vitiello, recipient of the Purchase College President's Award for Distinguished Alumni, presented on this 15th day of May, 2015. I wasn't going to say, I was just going to smile and wave, but I just thought of one important thing to say, which is I'm very honored to receive this from President Schwartz. And I'm also incredibly flattered, and it means a lot to be remembered by my professor, Louise Yellen. I left here 29 years ago, and you imagine a thousand students have passed through. And year after year, I know how I learn how much the education here meant to me, but I don't know if I knew it even at the time. And I also think for all of you graduating, you may not know who you're leaving a mark on, who's gonna remember you, how much you've contributed to this place, but it's, it's pretty incredible and you've worked for it and you've earned it, but you're so fortunate to have, have landed here. Anyway, thank you. now proceed to the awarding of the honorary degrees. I have asked Provost Barry Pearson to assist me in conferring the, degree, the, the degrees. Provost Pearson, would you please join me? Our first honorary degree recipient is David Henry Wang. Would you please join us? Your passion for writing for the theater began in college, and very quickly your work became noticed and noteworthy. Within two years, you had won your first award for a play written your senior year. This would become the first of many in the 35 years that you have been working, including Tony, Drama Desk, Obie, and Grammy Awards. You were not only an accomplished and prolific playwright, but also celebrated as a screenwriter and librettist for musicals and operas. You are perhaps best known for your play M. Butterfly, which you then adapted for the screen. M. Butterfly shares the marquee with other well-known and beloved plays, including Flower Drum Song, Aida, Yellow Face, and Chinglish. Your films Golden Gate and Possession solidified your reputation in screenwriting and you are currently establishing your reputation in television with the series The Affair. In the classical music world, you are America's most produced living opera librettist. Your contributions to the arts have been recognized by many. You have been awarded fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Guggenheim and Rockefeller Foundations, and the Doris Duke Charitable Trust. The nation's oldest Asian American theater company, the East West Players, christens its main stage the David Henry Wang Theater. From 1994 to 2001, you served by appointment of President Bill Clinton on the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. 
among others, the Asia Society, the China Institute, the Inge Festival, Penn, and the International Society for the Performing Arts have paid tribute to your outstanding career. You have been described by the New York Times as a true original, and by Time Magazine as the most important dramatist of American public life since Arthur Miller. Your wide breadth of production and your ability to apply your talents across disciplines resonates deeply at Purchase College. The creativity, innovation, and exploration that define your professional life warrant our admiration and respect. In recognition of your outstanding contributions to theater and the performing arts, your accomplishments as a playwright, librettist, and screenwriter, and for the legacy you have created, the State University, by virtue of authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of fine arts honoris causa, and I invest you with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. In token thereof, I present you with this diploma and direct that you be vested with the hood appropriate to your degree. President Schwartz, platform guests, relatives, and most importantly, graduates, thank you so much and congratulations. I'm so happy to join your big dance party here. You've just spent four years, or perhaps some of you slightly more than four, growing as intellectuals and artists, pushing your boundaries, going outside your comfort zones, taking new risks. So what now? Well, each of you will find your own path, but here are a few suggestions to help you hold on to the spirit of growth and adventure that you feel today. Number one, beware of dad rock. Around your late 20s to early 30s, you will suddenly feel tempted to believe that pop music has strangely reached the end of its history that all the good stuff was written around this time or earlier, after which creation simply ground to a halt. Fight this temptation. You don't want to turn into that guy or woman in your 40s driving down the highway blasting dad or mom rock. Hard as it may be, try to listen to the new stuff sometimes because the temptation to give up on music is related to a larger issue. Number two, resist nostalgia. Sure, you've just been through this amazing time, but these do not have to have been the best years of your life. Yeah. When people at 50 or 60 start thinking that the world or this country was a better place in their youth, maybe the problem isn't that the country has deteriorated, maybe the problem is that they have. Age brings wisdom, except when it doesn't. Three, think more like playwrights. Okay, this is obviously self-serving. But I do believe playwrights can save the world because you can't actually make a living at it. I don't mean to say you can't make a living. Apologies to you parents of playwriting graduates. On the contrary, there are many related crafts, teaching, writing musicals, and nowadays particularly writing for television, which are marketable and even profitable. And if you're lucky, every now and then, you might even have a play that turns a profit. But for the most part, no one writes a play to make money. You can't game that outcome. And in a way, this is wonderful, because playwrights are therefore forced to fall back on writing what we really love and care about. And this goes against a lot of the current moment in American culture, which has always valued profit and making money, but has recently devolved into a kind of hypercapitalism, 
but David Simon, the journalist and creator of The Wire, recently referred to when he said America had abandoned its social compact. And I agree that America seems to have reached this tipping point where we moved from a market economy to a market culture, and our society fell increasingly sway to a quasi-religious faith in the goodness of the free market to solve all human ills. Playwrights, but in reality, not only playwrights, many other sorts of artists and academics and actually people from all walks of life can resist the rather absurd notion that everything in our world can be reduced to how much money it makes. We can continue to value the intangible. Four, do not fear the culture wars. Okay, in the early 1990s, I find, found myself at the center of a culture war. I helped protest the casting of the British actor Jonathan Price as a Eurasian pimp called The Engineer when the musical Miss Saigon came to Broadway. We saw this as an example of yellow face casting, similar to blackface. Over the 90s and much of the aughts, I felt the culture wars recede. But recently, I think they've returned and with a vengeance. Each week seems to bring a new controversy over cultural appropriation, privilege, casting, Iggy Azalea appropriating hip hop, or a Katy Perry misusing Japanese culture, or Gamergate, or the Redskins, or whether the International Writers Organization Penn should have honored the French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo. When my first play was produced off-Broadway, an Asian American newspaper wrote that I had, quote, set Asian America back 20 years, unquote. And I was only 22 at the time. <laughs> now, obviously, this was somewhat painful, but I also believe that these discussions are necessary and even healthy, because they prove that art still matters, that people care about how their world is portrayed. Criticisms of content are not censorship any more than criticisms of aesthetic choices are censorship. Instead, they mirror larger debates taking place in our society, spurred by this important demographic shift where in another 20 to 30 years, over your lifetimes, Caucasians will become a minority in America. And that's why it's important to remain active in these debates over Ferguson, Baltimore, Staten Island, and beyond, through art and culture, through protests, through our professions, and even over social media. One of my favorite recent tweets came from Arthur Chu, a columnist best known as that Asian guy who won a lot of money on Jeopardy. <laughs> Arthur tweeted, do people who change hashtag Black Lives Matter to hashtag All Lives Matter run through a cancer fundraiser going, there are other diseases too. So either we're a society that cares about all our citizens or we're not. And just as you'll be tempted to stop listening to new music, so you will feel a pull to stop caring about others, to stop fighting for equality and justice. Many in my generation have done so. But it's often the task of a new generation, you, to pick up the pieces, ask the hard questions once more, and continue moving history forward. So congratulations. Starting today, you begin to take ownership of this world. I have faith that you will make it a much better place. And to quote some of my own dad rock, may you stay forever young. Thank you. I think that's great advice, except I'm not sure whether I should interpret that as meaning we shouldn't continue to play I Will Survive and move it up to the Bee Gees, is that? <laughs> Our second honorary degree recipient is Indra Nui. Would you please join us at the podium? After completing your college education and MBA in India, you emigrated to the United States to attend the Yale School of Management. 
and attain a master's degree in public and private management at the Yale School of Management. Fourteen years later, and after a career at the Boston Consulting Group, Motorola, Brown Bavaria, you joined PepsiCo. Your path to your current roles as chair and chief executive officer began in 1994 as the lead for PepsiCo's corporate strategy group, a role in which you led the restructuring of the company, including the divestiture of its restaurants into the successful Yum! brands, the acquisition of Tropicana, and the merger with Quaker Oats. In recognition of your keen business acumen and strategic thinking, PepsiCo named you President and CFO in 2001, CEO in 2006, and Chairman in 2007. <laughs> Under your tenure, you have established and championed a global vision called Performance with Purpose, finding innovative ways to minimize the company's impact on the environment while lowering costs, providing safe and inclusive workshops, workplaces for employees globally, and respecting, supporting, and investing in local communities where the company operates. Since performance with purpose was first articulated, PepsiCo has reduced its water usage by more than 20% per unit of production. It is on track to provide access to safe, clean drinking water to six million people worldwide by the end of this year. It has established a human rights operating council to better coordinate, implement, and monitor its own human rights strategy across its global operations. Active in education and nonprofit organizations you serve as a member of the Foundation Board of the World Economic Forum, Catalyst, and Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. You are a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. In addition, you serve as a member of the boards of U.S.-China Business Council, U.S.-India Business Council, the Consumer Goods Forum, Tsinghua University, and were appointed to the U.S.-India CEO Forum by the Obama administration. Your imprint is evident in PepsiCo's performance with purchase, with purpose, with purchase as well, because it is a vision that re resonates with purchase because it focuses on sustainability, embraces diversity, and underscores the values of creativity and innovation as keys to opening the doors to opportunities. In recognition of your leadership and commitment to sustainability, diversity, and collaborations to improve the lives of people worldwide, the State University of New York, through Purchase College, bestows upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. <clears throat> Ingenuity, by virtue of the authority vested in me, the faculty of the State University of New York concurring, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, and I invest you with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, in token which we present you with this diploma and direct that you be vested with the hood appropriate to your degree. Thank you, President Schwartz and the Board of Trustees for this wonderful honor. And let me say congratulations to my fellow honorary degree recipients. You know, this honorary degree means a lot to me because in my 21 years at PepsiCo, I have come to recognize the power of SUNY firsthand. From the bright, sunny SUNY students who bring their energy and insights to our internship programs, to the many SUNY alumni in our ranks, SUNY schools have played a very important role in PepsiCo's success. And as you know, just a short walk away from your campus, PepsiCo has a campus of its own, our global headquarters across the street from you in, on Anderson Hill Road. 
Recently, however, our home and purchase has been getting a much needed renovation. And we've spent the last two years over in White Plains. But over the next three months, we will return to purchase. And when we do, we look forward to once again sharing your basketball and swimming facilities. We look forward to once again sponsoring the farmer's market, giving both SUNY students and our employees a place where they can buy fresh local produce. And we look forward to having you, SUNY students, continuing a long tradition of visiting the sculpture garden, whether you come with a class, whether you're escaping from a class. <laughs> Like any good neighbor, we at PepsiCo strive to make a difference in the community. As President Schwartz mentioned, we are guided by a vision of performance with purpose. And our commitment to performance with purpose is to build a company that creates value for our shareholders and society as a whole, because we believe the two are really linked. Companies sponsor, companies prosper when communities and societies thrive. And Performance with Purpose has inspired us to grow our revenue by expanding our range of nutritious and delicious products from Quaker Oats to Tropicana to Naked Juice and Sabra Hummus. It has spurred us to minimize our environmental footprint and it has led us to continually attract and inspire our employees by providing an inclusive workplace, one where people can grow professionally while living their values. My motivation in telling you this is not just to tell you about PepsiCo, my true motivation is to impress upon you the fact that you can do well by doing good. In fact, the rest of us are depending on you to do just, just that. You, the class of 2015, is bursting with potential. In front of me today, I have no doubt that there are future entrepreneurs who will start thriving businesses, performers who will touch the hearts of millions, and visionaries who will think about society's next big idea. So as you set sail in pursuit of your dream, I'm going to leave you with one challenge. Please find a way to make a difference to this community, to your hometown, to any cause that you're passionate about. If you do so, you will find rewards beyond anything you've imagined. You know, Mahatma Gandhi once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. So thank you again for this honor, and thank you for being such a great neighbor and a friend to all of us at PepsiCo. And good luck to all of you. Go out in the world and make us proud. Thank you. Final honorary degree recipient is Deborah Spar. Would you please join us? As a graduate of Georgetown University School of Foreign Service and Harvard University, where you received your doctorate in government, you set forth on your professional career in academia. You began your teaching career at the University of Toronto and joined the faculty of the Harvard Business School in the early 1990s. During your tenure as a professor, you chaired the Business, Government, and International Economy Unit and served as a Senior Associate Dean, Director of the Division of Research and Faculty Development at Harvard Business School. You left Harvard in 2008 to become the seventh president of Barnard College. Distinguished academic, scholar, and educator, you have administered education programs at the University of Pretoria, Gordon Institute of Business Science, and in Rwanda. Both allowed you to share your vast skills and knowledge of market economics with the students and governments of these developing nations. You are a published author of several books on the economics of fertility and assisted reproductive technology and modern age femi feminism, among them ruling the waves from the compass to the internet, a history of business and politics along the technological frontier, the baby business, how money, science, and politics drive the commerce of conception, and Wonder Women, sex, power, and the quest for perfection. 
As a leader of one of the leading women's colleges in the nation, you have worked tirelessly to raise the visibility of Barnard, not only for its academics, but for its leadership on women's and gender issues. You have overseen the establishment of the Athena Center for Leadership Studies, an interdisciplinary center devoted to the theory and practice of women's leadership. You have helped in framing the dialogue and discussion on issues related to Title IX on the Barnard Columbia campus, as well as nationwide. Your outstanding academic research and field work at Harvard Business School broke new ground in understanding the economically and politically charged issues that women face worldwide from career to reproduction. As the leader of Barnard, your focus on expanding opportunities for women, low-income, and underrepresented students serves as an example to leadership in higher education. In recognition of your outstanding contributions to academic scholarship, your commitment to excellence, and your role in addressing and promoting the issues relating to diversity, Title IX, advocacy, and exclusiveness as the president of Barnard College, the State University of New York, through Purchase College, bestows upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Deborah Spar, by virtue of the authority vested in me, the faculty of the State University of New York concurring, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, and I invest you with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. In token thereof, I present you with this diploma and direct that you be vested with the hood appropriate to your degree. Thank you so very much. Good afternoon and congratulations to all of you here today. It is a great honor to be with you here today and it's also a bit of a personal uh, pleasure. The last time I was in this particular space was in 1980 when I was representing Blindbrook High School in the Westchester County Cheerleading Invitational Tournament. Um, I'm delighted to announce that we won on that memorable day in 1980. And <laughs> And also very grateful to my parents, Martin, Marty and Judy Spar, who were, who were here to watch me in 1980 and are here again today. <laughs> and, and somehow seem always to get stuck watching me when I'm wearing something particularly absurd. So thank you. Um, in thinking of that moment and in preparing a bit for today, I was re reminded of an argument that I was having at about the same time that I was practicing my cheerleading routines. And that argument was with one of my closest friends at the time. And it involved us fighting repeatedly about how we could best use our talents and our energy to try to change the world. My friend argued for an all-encompassing, no-holds-barred approach. He wanted to found organizations and push for change and lead a life of activism. I was advocating for a more incremental style arguing that truly impactful moves were unrealistic for people as young as we were then, and that fighting for radical change often proves either ephemeral or occasionally even disastrous. Better, I contended, to climb slowly up the hierarchy than to aim to topple it from the outset. Better to subvert rather than to attack. As we've heard a lot already today about activism, I am, re I am reminded, as I frequently am, of the argument that has stayed with me, and I must confess has haunted me, ever since. Is it better, I still wonder, to devote your life and energies to the major struggles around you, or to chip away at smaller causes? Is it better to fight the existential battles, even if their solutions are distant and unlikely, or to concentrate closer to home, where the chances for success, for small wins and random acts of kindness, are greater and more likely. At moments like this, at commencements, where we sit in fancy halls and honor extraordinary people, it's very easy to believe that the only way to affect change in the world is to think big, 
to strive for the most audacious solutions and fight the most important fights. And the world needs people of passion to do exactly that. But let me remind you that the world also needs the quieter types, the introverts, the ones who may choose to address the smaller but still urgent problems that surround us all. A man who needs a coat, a child who needs a home, a friend who needs a shoulder to cry upon. These aren't causes per se, and they rarely make the headlines. But a life composed of simple kindnesses carries a power of its own. A power that changes not the world, perhaps, but that corner of the world that each of us inhabits. As you all go out today into a world full of both beauty and injustice, some of you will lead the protests. And some of you will follow. Some of you will support causes with your blood and sweat and tears. And some of you, more quietly, with less fun fanfare, will host a fundraiser or write a book or will take the time to listen and learn about a cause that may initially be foreign to you. All of these kindnesses, big and small, matter. And all of you will have countless opportunities to shape your world in many ways, whether through singular acts of bravery or through the countless quiet expressions of concern that confront us all each and every day. I wish you luck as you venture forth along whichever path you choose. I wish you joy and adventure and the challenges that will test you and make you stronger. And to each and every one of you, to your parents, your families, your teachers, and your friends, I want simply to say congratulations. You made it. It is now my pleasure to introduce the 2015 Senior Class Speaker. Angelica Pilar Pina Alcantara. Angelica arrived at Purchase in the fall of 2011, ready to tackle all challenges a sociology major, her commitment to her studies is complemented by her dedication to helping others, evidenced by the many roles she has had as a mentor, tutor, and leader of student organizations. Angelica's contributions have been recognized by various groups on campus, including EOP MAP and community engagement. Notwithstanding of all these activities, she was elected captain of Purchase Women's Tennis Team. It is a pleasure to welcome you to the podium. I'm a philosophy major. I'm a philosophy major. Shout out to, to philosophy. No, no offense to sociology, but philosophy. Wow, guys, we made it. Uh, uh, this is better. There's like a fan here. I was burning over there, so hot. Uh, shout out to us for finishing Senior Project and surviving Senior Projects. Last week, I didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> okay. Uh, or, let me go. You can kiss your family and friends goodbye and put miles between you. But at the same time, you carry them with you in your heart, your mind, your stomach. Because you do not just live in a world, but a world lives in you. Frederick Buechner. One of the most important lessons I've learned over the past four years, and the one that I will always carry with me, is that you can find family and a home far away from the one that you were raised in. My experience at Purchase College has been an enlightening and life-affirming journey. I am extremely proud to have the opportunity to express my heartfelt appreciation to all my peers faculty, and the staff who had treated me like family. We've been through a lot together. Hurricanes, blizzards, prom zombies. Who can forget the culture shock downgrade, because I was upset, from Iggy Azalea to Lil B. <laughs> Not to mention the infamous My Heliotrope transition. 
Hopefully, by the time of our first alumni reunion, students will have figured out how to use it, and maybe they can actually attend the class in the finally renovated Humanities Building. Shout out to us, because we're the last class to have had a class in the Humanities Building. I'm just a Bronx girl by way of the Dominican Republic. I came to this country knowing absolutely no English. At the, um, I was 12 years old when I came. I forgot the part. My mom and dad left everything behind in Santo Domingo to provide my sister and me a better future. This country and the language were strange and unfamiliar, but we struggled together as a family to adapt and overcome. My first year, I ended up being shoveled into an ESL program in middle school. I also found myself repeating the seventh grade because though I tried desperately, I could not fully grasp this new culture. I can still remember the first time I saw snow, it was during Thanksgiving dinner, and it was my first Thanksgiving dinner too. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> well, this snow was so surreal. I stood there uh, freezing, yet hypnotized, because it was, not, it was so cool and so cold. Uh, for one day, the snow made the Bronx neighborhood look so beautiful, but that was just for one day. <laughs> but all too soon, this beautiful snow turned black and dirty and yellow, Yellow also, you know why. <laughs> that first winter was my longest and coldest. I missed my home. My English was so horrible. The first time I had to make a class presentation for geography class, I was petrified because they left me by myself too. I was, my peers left me by, all alone. I can still hear the, laugh, hear the laughter of my classmates still embarrassed like it was yesterday. I literally translated every, the whole presentation word by word, so it was, you know how that goes, you know how it goes. My experience was one of failure, but most of all fear. Fear because of the one huge secret I could not tell anyone. I was a non-legal resident. I had no clue as to what my future would hold. But somehow, deep down in my heart, I knew that getting an education was the key to my success. By high school, I had gained more, much more confidence. I was much more co uh, focused on my education. I decided to transfer out of ESL into all English classes because then I was never gonna learn. I was so hungry to learn. I involved myself in as many extracurricular activities as I could. I played soccer, volleyball, tennis for my high school. I was on the debate team. Honestly, understand, honestly understanding only half of the words from the long and complicated court cases. Secretly, my dream was of becoming a lawyer. Still is. I was selected to the National Honor Society and by my senior year of high school, I became the NHS president as well as class president of Louis D. Brandeis High School, which, you know, a close RIP Brandeis. Despite all these successes, my chances of attending college were slim. Yet, I desired it with all of my being. It was my dream and my family's dream. Though we had not the slightest clue as to how I could afford tuition, I used to stare blankly at the guidance counselors who told me bluntly, no documentation, no financial aid, and thus, no education. Still, I would not let that stop me from filling out the applications. Faith was all I had. I left the social security boxes blank and decided not to even acknowledge the request for proof of payment. I was willing to work night and day to pay tuition. However, without a green card, I could not even work legally. I had almost given up. Then came my interview of purchase. 
I qualify for the Merit Access Program that provides uh, mentoring and support services to qualify students. On my very first visit, Paul Nicholson, the EOP, <laughs> the EOP MAP director, <laughs> greeted me like an old friend. Students escorted me around campus with genuine kindness. I'm sorry, I feel like every time I breathe up, you can hear it. Sorry. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> I felt immediately at home. And it was during those first few hours here that I knew that this was where I wanted to be. Call it serendipity, but I received an acceptance letter from Purchase and a US work, uh, working permit and social security number within, numbers from each, within days from each other. My stars had aligned. I was going to college. One of my most memorable, memorable experiences I purchased is of a philosophy class I took freshman year called Ideas of Good and Evil. This class was taught by Professor Jarrett Russell. This class is the reason why I became a philosophy major. I'm gonna tell you why. This classroom was filled with students from all different majors in which ideas of morality were questioned. What was even more exciting was the way in which Professor Russell guided the class. His excitement and intellectual contributions were so unique and inspiring. It was here where I was introduced to people I can call my family, but most importantly, this experience served as a path to my growing journey at Purchase College. Thank you, Jared. I won't say it was easy. I won't say that I didn't feel like dropping out in order to work and help my family. Yet, at every bump in the road, I found the support that I needed to carry on. Friends, peer mentors, counselors, admissions, faculty, and the staff. So many people gave me their strength when my own was waning. During sophomore year, when I was homeless and had to spend breaks on my sister's couch, Purchase gave me a roof over my head and a safe place to grow. <laughs> this community has humbled me and inspire me to give back in some small way the enormous gift that I have been given. Nothing has been more rewarding than helping others like myself. There's no award or certificate or academic achievement that compares to the satisf satisfaction that comes from providing service to my peers. I have been blessed to tutor as I have been tutored to mentor as I have been mentored, to care for my purchased family as so many of you have cared for me. So graduates, we have formed unbreakable bonds and lifelong friendships with laughter and tears, heartbreaks and heartaches. We have gone through it all like a family. My brothers, my sisters, never forget that though we may not have it all together, all together we have it all. Thank you and congratulations to the graduating class of 2015. I just want to uh, suggest that that story, if told before the Congress or the New York State Legislature, I hope would convince people 
to pass the legislation that we so need to allow young people to get an education. We will now proceed with the conferring of the degrees. Mr. President, as Provost of Purchase College, I have the honor on behalf of the administration, faculty, and staff to present to you the college's 2015 degree candidates. And I ask with pride that you confer upon them the degrees which they have earned and to which they are entitled. I would respectfully invite Elizabeth Robertson, member of the Purchase College Council, to join you in the presentation of the degrees. The deans will introduce the chairs and directors who will welcome candidates from their respective schools and conservatories. The names of the candidates will be read by Jennifer Shingalo, Assistant Dean for Students and Enrollment, and Andrew Solomon, Assistant Professor of Journalism. This is a very important day for our graduates. I ask that students, faculty, staff, and family members please remain seated until all graduates' names have been read. Today, we celebrate a purchase tradition, the passing of the brick. Four years ago, an incoming freshman class of 2015 was a given a brick at orientation, a symbol of purchase and the achievements of our students. The class of 2015 brick has been safeguarded for the past four years, and in a little while, one of your classmates, Shannon Tingo, will hand the class a 2015 brick back to President Schwartz when she comes up to receive her diploma. It is now my pleasure to introduce Ravi Rajan, Dean of the School of the Arts. <laughs> Director of Art and Design Stephen Lamb will help welcome to the stage the candidates in art and design. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Art and Design, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts and Bachelor of Science. Joshua Ryan Alti. Danielle Baker Simon. Connor Scott Beal. Tara Belmont. Leslie Bernero. Olivia Jane Aiden Black. Emnia Feiderman. Nikki Jean Basile. Stephanie Bonja. Dylan Andrea Dio. Samantha Dimati. Nicole Tyler Duran. Sarah Desiree Drozowski. Matthew J. Durso. Gabrielle Elia. Cheryl Ann Fetke. Sarah Bridget Brody. Lillian Taylor Kane. 
Thomas Spencer Fitzgibbon. Molly Rose Flores. Charlene Hall. Jeffrey Robert Hyman, Jr. Cynthia Hernandez. Jorge Luis Hernandez. Emily Marie Himes. Aria Brownell. Nicholas Bruno. Emily Rose Bullock. Gianna Carampa. Gabrielle Carvel uh, Carvelon. Elisa Chade. Samantha Jane Clark. Felicia Marie Conway. Brittany Lynn Cooper. Ellen Corbett. Shannon N. Kraft. Erin Mary Fortunato. Yalitza Galan. Michelle Garcia. Irving R. George. Chandra Jambrone. Franklin N. Gomez. Giovanni Gomez. Rachel Erica Gordon. Samantha Grapp. Emily Jean Grigsby. Miranda Ray McIntyre Hughes. S Samantha E. Knightley. Daniel J. W. Coy. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel Crow. Salvatore Gaspare La Rosa. Danielle Ariane Lagarde. Christopher Eugene Lisitra. Gabrielle Lily Madera. Zachary Manti. Sean H. McNulty. Deanna Melillo. Carly Alessandra Moreno. Daniel Naiman. Karina A. Novella. Allison Panzeroni. Emily S. Perina. Gina Marie Petroni. Margaret A. Pinto. Christopher Postlewaite. Eleanor Grace Hickerson Purcell. Olivia Rotante. Angelina Ruiz. Jeremy Ruiz. Kelly Ryan. Rachel Aaron Salamone. Shai Schechter. Brandon Shefton. Anthony Stephen Seagwell. Calvin So. Emma M. St. Jacques. Olivia St. John. Tiffany Marcella Talbot. 
Stephanie Gar Tan. Melissa M. Tarazas. Catherine Rose Viscardi. Lauren E. Welch. Holly L. Williams. Shannon E. Tingo. Kristalina Ashley Tom. Simon Nathaniel Toski. Grace Lynn Tyson. Tanya K. Willock. Brandon T. Wu. Morgan Flannery Wright. Luca P. Zare. Mark J. Zubrovich. Rola S. Zayada. Jennifer Cacciola. Nora Caroline Einbender Lukes. Tanya Hernandez Delgadillo. James J. Lamberg. Paulina April Nagel. Alex Spurgel. Barry N. Shilowitz. Master of Fine Arts. Andrea Lynn Barone. Eugenia Malukova. Ryan C. Slauson. Lachelle C. Workman. Chair of Arts Management, James Underkoffler, will help welcome to the stage the degree candidates in Arts Management. <laughs> Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Arts Management, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Adriana Julian Alessandro. Seth Jordan Bateman. Kristen L. Breitmeier. Lauren T. Burroughs. Rebecca S. Chin. Mark Anthony Cochililo. Gabrielle Chelsea Conti. Elijah Y. Cooper. Kathleen M. Flannery. Brooke E. Flugie. John James Flynn, Jr. Lydia S. Franco. Zoe Therese Gadsden. Lillian Chen. Megan Luis Gonzalez. J Jocelyn Yvette Collado. Vanike Ami Dignito. Esteban James Brown <laughs> Monserrate.
Anthony Benjamin Germano. Jessica Marie Giovanetti. Connor James Grady. Emily J. Green. Darwin Ramon Javier. Ebony Nicole Jones. Courtney Karecki. Aaron Cass. Caitlin Elizabeth Kenyon. Melia Diamond Knight. Georgia Stephanie Kokoras. Susan Mary Kondratowicz. Natalie Cecile Lavalane. Lillian D. Lesser. Safra Angelica. Sorry? Levitan. Ryan Charles Lobin. Marcus Melvin Mack Jr. Amanda Lynn Mertz. Jennifer Deneen Matelski. Alyssa Marie Mercadanti. Asa Balanov Nadich. Nicholas H. Novine. James A. Simone. Emily Elise Turi. Jessica A. Palmatier. Francesca Haley Parker. Jesse Lee Pauley. Evan Thomas Perlstein. Fernando Luis Quinones, Jr. Vincent N. Santini. Eliza Carmina Santos. Adira Sofia Trooper Schiff. Bianca Y. Viteri. Kevin Weezer. Tanira K. Wiggins. Marlon L. Williams, Jr. Timothy Reagan Blaze Wolf. Amanda Wiley. Mandy Joan Zalinger. Co-director of dance, Betty Jane Sills, will help welcome to the stage the degree candidates in dance. <laughs> Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Dance, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts. Christian Nasser Allen. Danielle N. Alvarez. Diana Grace Amalfitano. Wilson Sean Dante Anderson III. Ardella Bang. Raven Danelle Barkley. Hillary Grace Bowden. Kathleen D. Bolana. Demetria A. Charles. Elettra Ciamperoni. 
Janina Clark. Nicole Delbin. Brecken Kylie Drescher. Reka Mercedes Eher. Madeline Marie Eltringham. Nima Parker Frazier. Hannah Rose Garner. Jayan Go. Mario J. Gonzalez. Chelsea Anger Hecti. Samuel Forrest Percy. Jillian Taylor Hobbs. Ayaka Kame. Mackenzie C. King. Seneca G. Lawrence. Nicole E. Lemelin. Felicia Lim. Alexandra Engel Lockhart. Alexis Nicole Lucena. Abigail Day Matthews. Garriott W. McCann. Emily G. McDaniel. Krista Nicole Morganson. Jordan E. Norton. Terrence Peck. Ezra Go. Imani Nia Simmons. Nicole Mariah Sonnefeld. Amy E. Stewart. Emily E. Tarrier. Alyssa S. Burnett. Ryan Fusao Yamauchi. Chisato Yanagasawa. It's now my pleasure to introduce Suzanne Kessler, Dean of the School of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Chair of Film and Media Studies, Michelle Stewart, will help welcome to the stage the degree candidates in Film and Media Studies. <laughs> Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty of Film and Media Studies, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts and Bachelor of Arts. Max Endo Bayarski. Jamie Bernat. Jonathan Chang. John D. Klaus. Alfred G. D'Elia. Magnus J. Deal. Milo Jasper Finnegan Money. Olivia Joyce Hampson. Walter Stevenson Higgins. Walker Stevenson Higgins. Rehan Islam. Dara E. Israel. Lisa A. Lakeman. AJ Lutsky. Jennifer Lavin McCabe. Alana Marie Morton. Tamur Syed Kutab. Jared Ray. Dior Rodriguez. 
Drew Santini. Matthew E. Seeger. James M. Tangridi. Matthew James Tascone. Kaj Thomas. Cameron Dijon Wood. Elazar Jacob Abraham. Emily Venezia Aragones. Lynn Teddy Lupin Barsenas. Gregory D. Berg. Matthew P. Bildzak. Larry Eugene Vineyard. Giovanna A. Borden. Gerard Guy Davis. Zachary T. Britt. Shannon L. Brooks. Christina Rose Carabetta. <laughs> Victoria L. Conti. Giovanni Kopman Cosentino. Louise Corbett. Rafia Kreutz. Jessica Ellen DeMarzo. Thomas Luke DeConstanzo. Carmine Anthony Dominicus Jr. Taylor P. Donnelly. Madison H. Egan. Kimberly, Kimberly Tyler Ang. Cara Marie Fallon. Sean Patrick Fitzgerald. Abigail M. Flynn. Patrick J. Helfrich. Leah T. Henry. David Harold Jagdale. Francis Henry Jenks. Gina N. Gerlando. Artemis Carotzeri Vermulin. Carlin Jade Pina. Patrick Michael Kelleher. Emeth Emily J. Locke. Kathleen Lopez. Richard M. Lynch. Ralph Alexander Marrero. Andrew R. McCusker. Wesley E. McDonald. Christian P. Melendez. Frederick R. Melendez, Jr. Fabiana Messina. Alyssa A. Milano. <laughs> Kathleen H. Molika. Jackson J. Nebrella. Gabrielle A. Newman. Gabriel A. Newman. Emma T. Newberry. <laughs> Nicholas R. Newman. Helen C. Onick. Abraham Par uh, pa Paharas. Christopher Albert Petruccio. Amanda Lee Fail. Brennan Davis Pilcher. Amanda Gray Reynolds. Daniel Ringel. Leanne Elizabeth Rivera. 
Ashley Andrea Penija. Victoria Piddle. Gregory Michael Prickle. Dominic Emmanuel Profacci. Justin M. Puya. Zachary A. Raffia. Jahara Marie Rodriguez. Elizabeth Ann Rudig. Brian Sansom. Brian M. Seabath. Tierney Shaver. Jessica Ann Suave. Kure Tigler. Alexandra R. Tutelian. Alina C. Van Dunk. Luke M. Van Brandenburg. Dana Adel Wallis. Emily Elizabeth Walenta. Colin Albert McLaughlin Walsh. Liam J. Walsh. Andrew Ward. Ebony Lene Washington. Joshua E. Williams. Sahir A. Wilson. Lena Yu. Chair of Humanities, Ross Daly, will help welcome to the stage the candidates in Humanities. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Humanities, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. James Gibbs Agostino. Rennie T. Altman. Dylan Jeremy Bales. Molly Elizabeth Bernard. Ryan T. Brady. Matt H. Brandon. Natalie M. Brandt. Angelica Pilar Pina Alcantara. Deanna Marie Brown. Brianna L. Buttermark. Jeffrey Carey. Sibila Chipaziwa. Krista F. Cody. Catherine May Coleman. Lauren E. Conrad. Cassandra C. Coppola. Ariana Lee Quadra. Gina Maria Consolo. Dylan F. DiBiase. Andrew Luis De La Roca. Jessica DiMartino. Evan DeNaro. Siobhan T. Dixon. Amanda Caitlin Domo. Emilio E. Estella. Mary Rose F. Fabrizio. Wendy M. Fayola. Asa Balanoff Nidich. Brittany Alexa Felix. Landon Gray Gamble. Courtney Foulard. Zacharias Charles Gerstein. 
Fallon M. Godwin Butler. Justin D. Goodman. Corey A. Green. Michael E. Hand. Cynthia A. Harder. Dylan J. Harrison. Francine K. Hendrickson. Matthew Israel Hernandez. Amanda Marie Hills. Dylan August Hoffman. Nicholas Tesla Douglas Horniak. Brittany A. Jackson. Sir E. Jackson. Haziel Jimenez. Lucas Jennings. Melissa Jacqueline Keynes. Aaron Cass. Haley Kim. Anna R. Kroll. Madison H. Egan. Joseph E. Krzyzewski. Diana C. Lucia. Cheyenne C. McDonald. Robert M. Mockery. Morgan Alexandria Marshall. Brandon K. Matsai. Victor Nicholas Massari. Patrick J. Mitchell. Katrina B. Turner. Megan K. McCabe. Bridget Mary Catherine Flynn. Matthew Melchioni. Jasmina, right. Jasmina Saray Melendez. William Robert Latin. Kyle Thomas Moran. Madeline Rose Moran. Christina Nikolai. Courtney L. Norris. Cassandra Nicole Novello. Cara Michelle Nuzzo. Stefan G. Oliva. Daniel Robert Palumbo. Imani Anasa Parkinson. Estefani Payano. Alexander Petrov. Jason Platzner. Elliot Sterling Poland. Aiden Thomas Powell. James E. Rafferty. Gianmarco Ramirez. Graziella Randazzo. Kevin M. Riley. Carida Ridore. Eva Gabrielle Rosenberg. Talia Rose Sabag. Hannah Isabel Salzberg. Corinne Gabrielle Santiago. Jesse Lee Pauli. Laura A. Squadron. John Ryan Schifano. 
Troy Nathaniel Day Shipton. Michael Eugene Chandra. Brandon S. Shapley. Joanna B. Waldron. Cassidy Lynn Witkowski. Kylie Quinn Stevens. Alexander P. Simeo Forides. Rachel J. Singh. Catherine T. Smith. Alyssa Ashley Spazero. Thomas Joseph Stevenson. Rachel Marie Sicarelli Grieber. Samantha Shante Stone. Sarah Ann Sussman. Emmeline Marie Swanson. Brendan J. Sendro. Elan Alessandro Trisquita. Mark Robert Vasey. Shannon A. Weeks. Daniel P. Welch. Tanira K. Wiggins. Lindsay S. Wilson. Ava Milan Giga. Daniel Zuckerman. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Humanities, I now have the honor to present the candidate for the degree of Master of Arts. Okay. Marianelli Newman. Ryan Slauson. It's my pleasure to bring Interim Director of Academic Programs and Liberal Studies and Continuing Education, Kathy Jang, who will help welcome to the stage the degree candidates in Liberal Studies. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of the School of Liberal Studies and Continuing Education, I have the great honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Ana Carolina Morero Afonso. Alejandro E. Alfaro. Nicole Jacqueline Anderson. Stephen J. Angelo. Abigail Aparicio Gibbs. Michael R. Arneth. Ashley A. Astacio. Andre A. Awan. Benjamin Becker. Colin J. Bennett. Brian C. Bowen. Leticia S. Blackburn. Paige C. Brown. Sedan Brown. Justin Christopher Carafotes. Samantha Bubb. Brendan Francis Casey. Jacqueline C. Chambers. Annette Cole. 
Eilish Marie Cooney. Dylan Costa. Asia M. Davis. Megan DiCino. Crystal A. Drakes. Timothy James James Dunn. Mattia B. Amsalem. Danielle Dunn. Catherine A. Ellingson. Frank Fantino. Leone Figueroa. Carl James Flickinger. Sergio Flores. Leandro A. Francisco. Michaela Lynn Fuentes. Benjamin H. Gladding. Aaron Foster Glazer. Valerie Ann Gonzalez. Matthew Grassi. Stacy M. Hansen. James R. Harrington. Nabib Hassan. Lydia Ann Henry. Nader Hamed. Eric Hernandez II. Catherine M. Hernandez Navarro. Ryan Johns. Brian A. Jones. Aiden J. Kaplan. Joshua A. Kaplan. Christian R. Nocken. Jeffrey Lafleur. Daniel Max Lampert. Joshua X. Lampley. Barton D. Landsman. Eileen Patricia Langan. Matthew R. Lloyd. Catherine Elizabeth McIntosh. Connor Charles Mahar. Brittany A. McGovern. Maureen K. McLaughlin. Ashley Valladares Mejia. Maya Minon. Charlene Nixon. <coughs> Alexandra Mikhail. Matt Molinsky. Yasha S. Morgan. Christina L. Ott. Chrismelli Robert Geronimo. Sarah V. Petinelli. Michael Parella. Dennis Ocampo. Francesca M. Perez. Justin Person. Aldo Jonathan D'Amico. Charles Envy Prelo. Brett J. Quigley. Rachel Ariella Rentschner Kelly. Nolan Robert Robinson. Danielle Mary Robins. Pablo Joshua Sanchez. Ruber M. Santos.
Danielle Nayel Sayage. Jeffrey N. Sayej. Deshauna Katrina Scott. Noel A. Singh. Akeem A. Smith. Monica Shibisti. Rowena F. Tesema. Neville S. Thompson, Jr. Jacqueline A. Smith. Lauren C. Smith. Megan Smith. Joanne Sniffin. Jasmine Nadine Somoano. Aman Sony. Jake Stevens III. Joseph Daniel Stoops. Lucas March Strader. Chan R. Turain. Jessica Sandy Tun. Danny S. Viegas. Viegas. Sam T. West. Jonathan M. Williams. Mark A. Wolford. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Music, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Music. Joshua B. Arbo. Juan Araglado. Derek M. Cabrera. Daniel Tyler Chirano. Marie Rose Civiterez. Charles McNaughton Cornell. Robert Francis Cosgrove. Matthew Cossack. Joseph A. DeMarco. Sophie Rose Dolamore. Richard Quake Einhorn. Trevor S. Fedeli. Ari J. Finkel. Christopher Foe. Jackson Henry Foote. Itamar Gov Ari. Danielle A. Grubb. Adam J. Hanahan. Joseph Joya Hall. Daniel F. Ingram. Lorenzo Jalden III. Andrew W. Jones. Christopher J. Jones. Peter Nichols Katz. Jesse D. Kessler. Jeremy Kinney. Alex Peter Coasty. Stephanie L. Krasner.
Callie H. Lample. Maura J. Lefebvre. Jake Garrett Levine. Daniel Stevenson Levitz. Virginia Elise Linder. Joseph Walter Mason. Zachary W. Miller. Joel Taylor Misery. Adrian Ace Mojica. Daniel M. Nelson. Eden Neville. Terrence Connor Nolan. Stuart Thomas Pender. Joshua H. Pleader. Darren B. Ron Jr. Benjamin G. Rice. Rebecca J. Reiter. Alec J. Safi. Andrew Collier Schuyler. <laughs> Evan J. Shornstein. Antonio Felipe Hernandez. Skyler Coco Solomon. Nika Spritz Statman. Amram Svai. Kenneth L. Trotter. Patrick J. Vadala. Melissa Valencia. Dakota Stefan Wayne. Eli Wilson Berkowitz. Elijah S. Wolf Christensen. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Music, I now have the honor to present the candidates for the degrees of Master of Music, the Artist Diploma, and the Performer's Certificate. Carl J. Ackley. Aaron Janoy Dawson. Christopher Joseph Delgado. Matt Thomas Zwanzig. Emily Rose Frederick. Jiwon Ha. Lynn Han. William A. Hoteling. Min Jiang Kwan. Ina Langerman. David William Love. Ryan Francis McNulty. Marie Fatima Rudolph. Sarah Francis Tush. Jeremy Daniel Wexler. Bonin Ching. Ming Ray Leo. Chair of Natural and Social Sciences, Linda Bestone, will help welcome to the stage the degree candidates in Natural and Social Sciences. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Natural and so Social Sciences, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Sciences. Oleyinka Akimola. Emily Rosalia Aleto. Juliet A. Alvarez. Glorinel Amaro. Brittany Monet 
Anderson. Justin J. Andrews. Alana Astorita. Kimberly Anita Armstrong. Erica Celeste Avalos. Leticia Barrientos. Amanda S. Bartley. Philip Michael Brannon Clauber Basel. Stanley Beauvoir. Basarda Baluli. Scott Bender. Juan S. Bentanker. Aliyah Rose Burdoff. Jessica Lynn Boji. Robin Bonacci. Dexter Lewis Brearley. Emma Elizabeth Browning. Casey L. Burry. Danielle Leonardo Castro. Kelly E. Chacha. Yoon Jeong Choi. Stephen R. Clary. Jada Candace Cole. Bianca Rose Covello. Michael V. Criviaro. Jeremiah Curtis Shanley. Sarah Wyoming Dawson. Rachel Rose Didis. Natalie Moore De Janeiro. Kayla Marie Del Biondo. Chelsea M. Del Vecchio. Daniel M. DeMeo. Kathleen E. Dengler. Vanessa DeMauro. Sivan Dorr. Jocelyn Yvette Collado. Megan Louise Gonzalez. Baloney Natalie Ebner. Deandra Emsley. Arellis J. Espigel. Taylor M. Esposito. Tyler J. Feminella. General P. Ferraro. Alex L. Finkelstein. John Adam Ford. Lydia S. Franco. Zoe Therese Gadsden. Alejandra Garcia. John Joseph Gargiulo. Iman Saad Gawida. Skyler W. Gifford. Jamie Samantha Glass. Jeffrey M. Gleinert. Leah M. Gorman. Angela Greenstone. Christine D. Hannigan. Tanya Hernandez Del Jadillo. Kelly Rose Hogue. Sarah Joan Holman. John Michael Iatropoulos. Tatiana Paris. Phineas Alexander Howie. 
John Andrew Jonas Jr. Angela Jordan. Colleen A. Kearns. Jonathan A. Kinney. Genesis Nipping. Susan Mary Kondratowicz. Kaim Kramer. Nelson O. Mejia. Rebecca Krasny. Nicholas A. Lali. Alexa Lamarca. Samantha Larmy. Charlotte E. Lee. Tomas Lien, Sahaya Malika Lewis Jones. Clara Rose Liberoff. Michael J. Licata. Thomas Hamilton Lipska. Lori Ann Lopez. Nadinia Lopez. Heather Ray Lukey. Ivana Lukic. Kat Wolf Lupo. Cynthia R. Mack. Tyler Wade Madel. Ricardo Manzaneras Rojas. Christina M. Marquez. Eliza Martinez. Colleen E. McNamee. Tara Melfi. Amy Melgar. Anderson Mihili. Leah Ann Monteleone. Charlotte Rose Morris. Inegriff C. Morrison. Corey B. Mosler. Sinclair Mott. Colin Edward Moyer. Catherine Mulvey. Jenna Nardi. Megan E. Kirby. Leanne Stumper. Kelsey Zaccanino. Alexander G. Nukem. Shin Ochi. Eunice Abasore Olodare Famadimu. Megan Kelly Ong. Paulina M. Orr. Raul Edwin Ortuño Ampuero. Alice Mallory Osborne. Karim Othman. Attila Papp. Rosemary Angelia Pereira. Jennifer R. Perry. Lauren E. Pinette. Edwin Fortari. Brian Gregg, Jr. Anna Elizabeth Palmer. Emily Bryn Selliver. Kyle Thomas Rory. Andrea Plate. Elsa Puma. Lisa N. Qualia. 
David Edward Regan. Therese Rambuquela. Varun A. Sundar. Antoinette Richard. Jasmine Elodie Tonde Tondega Rippy. Robert D. Robles. Kishana D. Romero. Veronica Yanil Romero. J. Daniel Ruiz. Laura Vanessa Sanchez. Junior A. Sanguina. Christina T. Schultz. Erica Vaughn Sheridan. Gordon H. Seltzer. Stephen A. C. Selvaggi. Jill U. Serantes. Joseph Spinato. Lineker San Hilaire. Devin T. Stack. John M. Stephen. Casey J. Saunders. Anna R. Kroll. Isabel E. Sosa. Marie Claude Toussaint. Laerte P. Sousa Neto. Amanda Stigliano. Gabriel W. Strom. Rachel Marie Sicarelli Grieber. Ashley A. Sukdale. Brandon J. Sandro. Tamara P. St. John. Darren Eugene Thornton, Jr. Daniel J. Turlet. Ryuchi Uhara. Searing Sandupe Ukab Lama. Yolandri Vargas. Paul Vespo, Jr. Henry L. Victor. Robert Walls. Jessica Nicole Work. Chelsea Iman White. Darian Larice White. Rachel Christine Whittemore. Jason M. Weeder. Danielle Williams. Tony A. Wilson. Weixing Wu. Elizabeth Alexandra Yako. Maisha Zahim. Madison D. Zeigler. Cody Ang Cody Alexander Zwire. Jessica Christiane Burko. Jessica M. Bolger. Brianna Blue Bright. DeLorean Brown Hospitalis. Simone J. Bryant. Emily Christine Buetti. Gabriella M. Corona. Amanda T. Christodulu. Lindsay E. Drew. 
Ana Carla Gonzalez Villasenor. Dylan Scott Johnston Jordan. Daniel H. Rivera. Director of Theater Arts, Greg Taylor, will help welcome the, to the stage the degree candidates in theater arts. Do you have a bag? The bag is ready. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Theater Arts, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Fine Arts and Bachelor of Arts. Alyssa N. Acevedo. Robert L. Anderson. Killian John Appleby. Christina M. Atanasowski. Sean Alexander Austin. Ilianette Marie Bernabo. Alice Rose Bishop. Alexander T. Crowell. Isabella Rose D'Esposito. Angelique Lauren Ertractor. Nicole H. Urkaboni. Charles M. Ferris. Paul D. Grennan. Lisa Mercedes Hardwick. Parker A. Harris. Lauren Hyatt. Carolyn M. Jenkins. Caitlin Elizabeth Kenyon. Dolisa Marie Jennings. Daniel Raymond Lightman. Krista Lamia. Francesca Marie Litz. Hanoi I. Lopez. Thomas Patrick Luke. Kelsey Ray Laurie. Michael J. Lynch. Laura A. Mahan. Daniel Thomas Mariano. Samantha L. Martino. Justin C. Muzante. Melissa Saidia Catherine Niels. Sheila O'Neill. Rebecca Lise Paulino. Thomas John Powell. Rebecca Ryan. Carrie N. Randall. Michelle Rodriguez. Jonathan D. Rossner. Searing Sandu Ukab Lama. Amaris Liba Siklik. Brett Evan Solomon. Benjamin Stopek. Gabriel Vasquez. Michelle K. Vittori. Sydney C. Alexander. Daniela Maria Amador. Colin Alexander Ursuljan. Liddy Bavois. 
Karina Mercedes Couret. Nicole Marie Ferguson. Brittany H. Henry. Jacob Morgan Fish. Sasha A. Spitzer. Alton Ray Holston III. Lauren, Lauren F. Walker. Herman Whaley Jr. Flora R. Wilds. Samuel John Volkov. <laughs> Prescott Randolph Balch Jr. Janelle N. Boiso. Benjamin J. Karras. Jessica M. Costaliola. Acacia S. Drake. Kayla Fessick. Alex J. Gendel. Benjamin E. Green. Rachel Hospes. Sarah Carl. Jeremy M. McComish. Kyle M. Muller. Teddy J. O'Rourke. Brianna Poe. Elizabeth A. Polkowski. Simon A. Quayle. Hey, Simon! Kayla M. Queter. Elizabeth C. Ramsey. Kira Sinberg. Zachary M. Tomillo. Yana Jana G. Violante. Suzuka Watanabe. Stephen M. Weeks. Jeffrey E. Weiss. Jacob D. Wexler. Mr. President, on behalf of the Faculty of Theater Arts, I have the honor to present the candidate for the degree, Master of Fine Arts. Brittany Marie Balfour. Three candidates, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, you have here assembled before you the Purchase College degree, degree candidates for 2015. On behalf of the administration, faculty, staff of the college, I ask at this time you confer upon them their degrees. You need to hear this because if I don't do it right, we have to start over. <laughs> Upon the authority vested in me by the Chancellor and the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degrees which you have earned and to which you are entitled 
Congratulations, you are now Purchase College graduates and alumni. Get on up. 